Hello, I'm Simon Mayo. Thank you very much indeed for taking part in the nationwide school read for Itch. I have to say, I'm very, very excited. Who'd have thought I would ever write a textbook? Because that's what it feels like. Although, actually, having said it, it's not really a textbook. Don't think of it as a textbook. It's just an exciting story. It happens to have some sciencey stuff in it. If you don't get science, it doesn't matter, because it, it's a big adventure story. Uh, anyway, it's about Itchingham Loft. He's 14 years old. He lives in Cornwall. He lives with his sister Chloe uh, and his mum and dad. His best friend at school, and he struggles really to make friends, uh, is his cousin Jacqueline, who's known uh, as Jack. Itch is an element hunter. He collects the periodic table. Uh, he loves his science. He's working his way through the periodic table. In the course of this story, he discovers a very dangerous new element. It turns out it's element 126. That's where it's going to fit on the periodic table. Very dangerous ferociously powerful and very, very valuable. Anyway, as it's a read-along kind of thing, uh, I might as well start at the beginning. Well, there's an earthquake on the very first page. This is the first time that we meet Itch uh, himself. It's kind of a good introduction as to the kind of thing that he gets excited about. Itchingham Loft had caused explosions before. There had, in truth, been many bangs, flashes and smells coming from his bedroom in the past. His multi-stained carpet and pock-marked walls bore testament to that but there had been nothing like this one. It wasn't just the bedroom walls that shook, it was the whole house. Windows and doors rattled, the pots and pans in the kitchen jumped, and two drawers in the dresser opened. Not that Itchingham was aware of any of that, as he was unconscious. He would have stayed that way too if it hadn't been for the fact that his eyebrows were on fire, and the astute decision of his 11-year-old sister Chloe to throw a mug of water over his face. Itch, everyone called him Itch apart from his mother, whose idea it had been to christen him itching him in the first place, sat up sharply, shaking the water out of his eyes. What did you do that for, Chloe? I did have it under control, you know. Chloe shrugged. Yeah, right, your eyebrows were burning. And she turned and went back to her bedroom, which was across the landing. Itch felt for the prickly remains of what used to be his eyebrows. What was left crumbled in his fingers. Then the unmistakable smell of burnt hair filled his nostrils, and he realised... Chloe had been right. He stood up a little gingerly and thought he'd better go after her and admit it, but when he poked his head into her room, he found she was already asleep. Itch marvelled at her ability to get back to sleep in seconds, something he'd never been able to do. The truth is, if you sleep in the room next to a 14-year-old science mad boy who likes to blow things up, you learn very quickly, only to take notice of the very big bangs. So that's the first time that we meet Itch, and that's the first time that we meet Chloe. I hope you enjoy reading along with the first Itch story. Maybe I'll see you soon.